know exactly that this video doesn't need an introduction, just like I said last time. Anyway, here's what the topic of today's episode going to be about, and it's this VHS tape. Yep, I'm once again going back to Thomas. It's the second VHS that I'm gonna be diving into, and it's got episodes from the first season. Let me tell you the history of how I came across this tape and some of the home video releases I watched when I was a child. As you all know, the VHS tape that was my favourite during my childhood was the tape that included episodes from the third season that I already talked about in the first episode. Then there was this tape that my grandparents had, this VHS also having episodes from season 1 that I got from the used to be library, the same one that had two of the Steady Eddie tapes, these DVDs from 2005 to 2006 that contained episodes from the 6th season, the one that's the first time seeing the English version of a show that included episodes from the 4th season, this VHS that nobody got to upload it onto the internet that had episodes from the 3rd and 4th seasons, and lastly is this one, containing episodes from the 5th season. Yep, this is the order and history of the VHS's and DVD's I've watched throughout my childhood, and boy, only one of them was in English as the rest were 80% Welsh. And there was also this tape that I briefly saw in primary school as I didn't watch the rest of it. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. This VHS tape called Thomas Atankai Gaveshion, Chakiai Chaferfisak Uif Story Arach, contains episodes from the first season of a Welsh dub of Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, showing me how some characters were first introduced, like Terence, Bertie, and Percy. A similar case happened with the other tape, Gochungstem Ak Uif Story Arach, where it showed me how Toby and Henrietta were first introduced to the series. This season felt different, as the music sounded synthy and the set looked simplistic, but not that much. As I didn't explain much earlier, my grandparents had this VHS for me to watch, with the others being this one including episodes from Fireman Sam and Super Ted, Tequina Chaktor, Rala Rudins, Sally Mali, and this tape that has Scooby Doo crossing over with Batman. Yep. So, without any more explanations, let's dive into it. The tape begins with a video sign ident, the same one seen in the VHS containing episodes from season 3, and just like that, the iconic intro plays. Now, you may have noticed that this tape alone is the Welsh version of Troublesome Trucks and Other Stories, once again narrated by John Ogwen. As this tape was released two years after the original was released and that it also re-released the same year it came out in 1988. Ironic, isn't it? Anyway, the first episode on the tape is Chuckyai Chaferfis, the Welsh version of Troublesome Trucks. The episode begins with James looking sad as the narrator told us that he had been naughty and that he'd been shut up in the shed after damaging a brake pipe from a coach and that it had been fixed by using someone's boot lace. Am I missing something here? Yeah, so apparently this episode takes place after an episode that I've not watched when I was little and that was a story about James taking some coaches and that he damaged a brake pipe from one of them and his crew persuaded one of the passengers to use his bootlace to fix it. Of course, I do remember hearing that story from this book, where it was adapted from the Railway series book James the Red Engine, which I also read in a compilation book featuring stories written by the Reverend Audrey. So, James feels bad about the incident days earlier and that he isn't allowed to shunt, just as the Fat Controller comes in and tells the Red Engine that he hopes that he will be a better engine as his actions have caused a great embarrassment to the railway. James apologises and the Fat Controller assigns him to pull some trucks. He goes to the station just as Thomas brings in his trucks and teases him about bootlaces, reminding James of the incident. Cheeky bugger. 
As James couples up to the trucks who look drastically different in this season, the trucks tease him for his red paint but James ignores them and sets off. The trucks try their best to stop James by putting their brakes on but the red engine just keeps going on with full determination. They then shout at him to give up, but James, still confident, keeps on going to make himself prove that he is a better engine. Just as he arrives at Gordon's Hill, James manages to get a grip of himself and his pulling of trucks gets easy. But suddenly, a coupling snaps in his train and several of his trucks plus a brake van roll down the hill, just as the guard stops the runaway train in case of an accident. James comes down at the bottom to collect his trucks when Edward, who had stopped at the scene, asks to help, but the red engine politely refuses and carries on. A determined James pulls the trucks all the way up to Gordon's Hill and manages to conquer it, and with a jump cut of him reaching the station, he made it there. As James is resting, the fat controller arrives on board Edward, and he is worried what he'll say to him. However, the fat controller is most pleased with him as he saw everything on Edward's train and since James made the trucks behave, he decided to allow the red engine keep his paint. So that was quite certainly an episode. James proving himself to be a better engine by teaching the troublesome trucks to behave. I didn't know that it was a follow-up to an episode that was on this VHS, which alone would have showed me how the characters were introduced. Like with Thomas, Edward, Henry, Gordon, James, Annie and Clarabelle, and the Fat Controller. Although it's thanks to these books that I remember reading having stories that happened to be from the earlier episodes, or were based on the stories of the Railway series. And with this episode, I'll say it's a good episode, showing James not messing around with the trucks and having a bit of an arc to himself. However, right after the episode ends, we get ourselves name boards of the characters being translated into Welsh. These intermission segments would occasionally appear when Thomas first aired on CITV back in 1984 and would be on certain VHS releases in both the UK and US. And I have to say, it's pretty unique that Wales had translated most of the name boards for the characters. Those are except for Edward, Gordon, James and Terence as their names are spelt and pronounced the same way in English. Also, I don't know why this was put here, as it shows an image of a fat controller, or a reolur teo as he's called in Welsh, with text saying Thomas and all talk, meaning Thomas will be back soon, or Thomas back soon. This image alone signifies that it's used to inform a commercial break, but right after that is more of a name board, so, okay, they're there I guess. The next episode after that is James Archen Chwim, the Welsh version of James and the Express that translates to James and the Speed Train. As this episode is a continuation of a previous one, it's shown that James, while having a good impression by the Fat Controller, is still being ridiculed by Gordon and Henry for the bootlace incident seen in James and the Coaches. James even tries to bite the two back by reminding them of their own faults, like Henry being bricked inside a tunnel and Gordon getting stuck in a hill. But to no avail, Gordon boasts about him being the only engine strong enough to pull the express and states never once did he lose his way. Now did he? The next morning, Gordon and James prepare for work and Gordon gloats to the red engine again about getting to pull the express while James is left doing odd jobs. James, who is now careful and patient with the coaches, brings them into the station and wishes how he could pull the express. Gordon sets off for his journey with the express just as James goes back to work shunting trucks and fetching coaches. Later, when James had brought in some coaches, Gordon slowly crept into Knapford Station without anyone seeing him. 
James sees him and asks if he has lost his way, and Gordon admits that he had been switched off to the mainline by mistake and that he was forced onto the loop back to the station. This mistake caused the passengers to be angry and demanded refunds until the fat controller gets their attention and promises them a new train. James then takes the opportunity to pull the express and is very happy right after the fat controller asks him. The journey goes all well with the express and not a slip up is done. When James arrives at his destination, the passengers thank him and the fat controller asks if he would like to pull the express sometimes. The next day, James sees Gordon shunting trucks and as you may know, Gordon himself has shown to have a bit of a disdain towards trucks as he's an express engine and he would feel silly if anyone saw him pulling them. Yet here, he's shown teaching the trucks some manners and keeping them in order. So, James and Gordon become friends as James takes the express whenever Gordon rests and Gordon never again talks about bootlaces and that they agree when it comes to their own opinion of trucks. So, that concludes the story of James and how he handles coaches and him finally having the chance to pull the express. And there's some continuity referencing some stories that I've only read in some books and not watched them on television. Makes me wish if I saw what that tape was about when I was little. There's even an ironic echo where Gordon boasts that he knows the express line by instinct, but when he explains to James that he went around a loop to return to the station, James pretty much said what Gordon said to him. Neat writing there. All in all, a nice closure to the James the Red Engine adaptation arc in the series, even if I did not see the first part as a child. After that is Thomas Argyard, the Welsh version of Thomas and the Guard. Ah, an episode about Thomas, who wouldn't forget about him, as he's the title character here. Anyway, Thomas is enjoying his life on his branch line, pulling his two faithful coaches, Annie and Clarabelle. Which he got those in the episode Thomas and the Breakdown Train. Thomas loves his coaches very much, and when taking trains, both take passengers, but Clarabelle can only take luggage and a guard. Thomas and his coaches often sing to each other when taking journeys, and Annie and Clarabelle know how important the fat controller is to Thomas. One day, Thomas becomes impatient as he has to wait for Henry with his train. Henry finally arrives and moans that his system is out of order. Thomas shows no sympathy towards him and insults the green engine, calling him fat. Whoa. Thomas then leaves the station, trying to make the lost time. But however, he was so impatient that he left the guard behind. Thomas doesn't notice this and thinks to his coaches, but Clarabelle is too upset to sing with him as she doesn't have the guard with her. Annie, upset too, tries to tell Thomas about it, but the tank engine is too busy rushing to the station to listen. Eventually, he stops at a red signal and he and his crew wait for the guards to tell them what the matter is, who is nowhere to be seen. Annie and Clarabelle know about this and tell Thomas that he left him behind. Luckily, the guard comes in running, reaching the train, feeling tired and having a glass of milk to keep his energy running. Thomas apologizes for the incident to which the guard accepts and points out that the signal has been dropped and soon, Thomas carries on with his journey. Annie and Clarabelle feel much better with their guard and Thomas reaches his destination in record time. That's what this episode is about, and a very basic one. Not only was it about Thomas leaving the guard behind, but it also showed how much of a flawed protagonist he is. He is impatient, cheeky, arrogant and unsympathetic to others, and overall being a selfish yet enjoyable character. The mother truck had James, with that Thomas. Skinty cara eskid, tragom. Oh dear, do him hanar da. Queen of Henry. Mar bath mawr yn bod yna i. Tut lol, mi ddai Thomas. Rhi de wyt i, yna i gyd. Thomas, ydw i, ydw i'n tynnu tren. Dyna'l wynion hyll. 
Hell, mae'r hain yn olwynion arbennig iawn. It's also the first in the series to have Annie and Clarabelle as one of the main characters, as these two coaches have become a staple in the series since. So, it's a decent episode, and the first part of the story is adapting Tank Engine Thomas again, which will move on. The next episode on the tape is Thomas and Poscotta, the Welsh version of Thomas Goes Fishing. On Thomas's branch line, the blue tank engine often looks forward to the sight of what he likes, the river, where the people are fishing. Thomas has his wants to stay and watch, but his driver wouldn't let him, as he knows that the fat controller will be cross if they are late. And whenever Thomas sees another engine, he would share them with his longing to fish, but they have the same response that engines don't go fishing. One day, at Ellsbridge Station, Thomas sees that the water column is out of order, making him annoyed as he is very thirsty. His driver suggests that they fetch water from the river instead. Thomas and his crew come to a bridge and have brought along a bucket and a rope. The driver and fireman bring the bucket down the river and fill it with water, with the bucket having some holes due to it being old. They pour the water inside Thomas's tank several times before the tank engine now has his thirst quenched. Soon, however, Thomas feels a pain in his boiler and steam comes out from his safety valve. His crew brings him to Farquhar to see what's causing the pain in the little blue engine's boiler. The guard phones an inspector and the fat controller to inspect inside the boiler, all the while the workmen put up signs that are translated into Welsh around Thomas. Both the inspector and the fat controller arrive and the driver explains what is going on. The inspector takes a look inside Thomas's tank and asks the fat controller to take a look as well and to the shock of the fat controller, he finds... FISH! Yep, you know pretty well that this face had become a meme. Apparently, there are fish inside Thomas's tank as his crew had poured in water from the river that they also collected some of the fish and filled it in his tank without noticing. The fat controller jokes that Thomas has got his chance to go fishing after all and soon the crew and the inspector start fishing. They then have a meal of fish and chips and the fat controller hopes that Thomas learns his lesson about engines not fishing as they do not fit them, as it is uncomfortable. That certainly was an episode, and a humorous one too. Thomas has his wants of going fishing and when he gets water from the river to fill his tank, he gets his dream come true, but not in the expected way. And also, how come this sign was translated into Welsh while the rest are remained English and it's clipping through the black bar? So, it's a decent episode overall, focusing on Thomas. And it somehow became a bit iconic anyhow. After that is Thomas Terence Ar Eira, the Welsh version of Thomas Terence and the Snow. Autumn has arrived on the island of Sodor, with the trees and fields having been turned brown. Thomas is running along his branch line when he sees a tractor ploughing the fields. The tractor introduces himself as Terence and explains that he has caterpillar tracks where he can use them to go anywhere. Thomas thinks his wheels are ugly and tells Terence that he likes his rails better. A few months passed by and winter has arrived. Everything on the island has been covered with snow. As there is snow blocking the tracks, Thomas has to use his snowplow to remove it. But he disliked using the snowplow as he finds it heavy and uncomfortable. He shaked and banged the snowplow and at the end of the day, it is badly damaged that his driver removed it and scolded him and shut him up in the sheds. The next day, Thomas's crew arrived to fix the snowplow, but it couldn't fit the tank engine, making him feel very pleased. Thomas takes Annie and Clarabelle and boasts to them that he doesn't need to wear the snowplow, but the coaches and his driver are worried as there is deep snow in the valley ahead. 
Thomas doesn't care and sure enough, he crashes into a snowdrift and becomes stuck. His wheels couldn't get him out and the passengers try to dig him out of the snow, but the more they do so, more snow buries his wheels. Thomas feels bad about this and starts crying, realizing that it's his fault he didn't wear his snowplow. However, a bus comes in to take Thomas's passengers and who should come to his rescue but Terence the tractor. Terence takes Annie and Clarabelle away and frees Thomas away from the snowdrift. Thomas is glad to be unstuck and thanks Terence for rescuing him and praises for his caterpillar tracks. And his driver promises Thomas to be sensible in the future. And does he? That episode certainly was something. It's the introductory episode of Terence the Tractor, where he's shown to be taking Thomas's teasing in the name of fun and doesn't take any of his nonsense seriously. He is also capable of pulling rolling stock, especially engines like Thomas when he was stuck in the snowdrift. Terence would also have a few significant roles like helping clear the snow away in Mrs. Kindly's house, restoring Henry's forest alongside Trevor, getting Bertie out of the mud at the vicar's party, pulling Elizabeth out of the snow and even put himself in danger when he nearly fell in the frozen lake while he was collecting a Christmas tree, just as he was rescued by Thomas. Quite the opposite, wouldn't you say? So overall, it's a quite good introductory episode for the first non-rail character to appear in the series. And this just might be one of John Ogwen's finest episodes he narrated in the Welsh dub. On to the next one is Thomas a Bertie, the Welsh version of Thomas and Bertie. In this episode, Thomas meets a red bus named Bertie, who explained that he took his passengers home when Thomas got stuck in a snowdrift and that Terence helped pulling him out. Nice sense of continuity there. Thomas claims that he can go faster than Bertie, to which the bus challenged him to a race. The race is on, as Thomas starts to pick up speed. Bertie was about to take an advantage over Thomas, but is stopped at a level crossing and the tank engine passes him. The road is soon far away from the railway as Thomas stops at the next station to collect his passengers. Just as he starts off, he sees Bertie at the bridge, now taking the lead. With Thomas desperately trying to catch up, he unfortunately stops at Ellsbridge station as a signal is down. Bertie happily taunts him, making Thomas doubt himself if he will lose the race. But with getting a drink from the water column, he carries on when the signal drops. Thomas is now the one who's taking the lead, as Bertie has to wait at a traffic light. The two head to head with each other, but Thomas overtakes the bus and finally reaches the station, winning the race. The passengers cheer for the tank engine and Bertie congratulates him, remarking that he would have rockets instead of wheels to beat him. That was exclusive to the Welsh dub, by the way. Thomas and Bertie now work together and they often talk about their race, but the fat controller warns Thomas not to go high speeds and Bertie's passengers do not like being shaked like marbles in a bottle. That was a simile exclusive to the Welsh dub too. Plus, one day, the two might race each other again. And they have. Several times. This episode was quite certainly one of the most iconic episodes of the first season, as it's about Thomas racing Bertie and showing most of the sets in this episode. And it even showed the shot of Thomas passing the windmill, which you all know is used for the one and only famous intro. It's another introductory episode about a non-rail vehicle who's seen briefly in the last one, and... It's kinda weird seeing Bertie without his eyebrows. But anyway, it's an enjoyable episode about Thomas and Bertie's rivalry and challenging themselves to a race, and the final part of the Tank Engine Thomas Again adaptation arc, 8 out of 10. The next episode is Troy Mewn Kilchoif, the Welsh version of Tenders and Turntables that translates to Turning in Circles. 
Gordon and Henry feel depressed, as it isn't the same without Thomas since he left to run his own branch line. They have work to do, shunting and fetching their own coaches. James finds it very hard as well and complains. All of the engines grumbling causes trouble for the fat controller. And on the subject, tank engines like Thomas don't need a turntable, but the big tender engines do, as it is dangerous for them to run backwards. After talking to Thomas about his work, Gordon goes over to the turntable at Knapford Sheds. Unfortunately, due to strong winds as it is near the ocean, Gordon couldn't balance himself and the crew nor the workmen couldn't get him in place. They give up and tell the big blue engine that he would be a little engine like Thomas if he didn't keep his tender on the turntable. And as a result, Gordon is forced to pull his train backwards and gets laughed at by some schoolboys and even Thomas. James passes by Ellsbridge and laughs at Gordon too, just as Gordon warns the red engine not to stick on the turntable too. But James brushes this off and goes onto the turntable and sure enough, the strong wind starts blowing him around like a top. Gordon saw everything and when it stopped, he teased James, telling him if he was playing roundabouts. James is now green in the face, feeling ill and humiliated of himself. That night, the three engines, Gordon, James and Henry, propose a plan that the next day, they will go on strike, leaving the episode on a little cliffhanger. And that's what this episode is about. Gordon and James having troubles on the turntable and that they then decide to go on strike at the end. But why? You'll soon find out in the next. The episode following after that is Strike in a Shed, the Welsh version of Trouble in the Shed that translates to Strike in the Shed. There is a ruckus of angry passengers at Knapford Station, as Henry didn't show up with his train. The station master informs this to the fat controller, and Sir Topham goes to the shed to see what's going on. At Tidmouth Shed, he finds the three engines, and Gordon says that he, Henry and James will no longer fetch their own coaches or do any shunting like common tank engines. The fat controller is surprised about this and tells that engines on his railway do as they are told. He then goes over to Wellsworth to enlist Edward as the station pilot to make sure the day's train goes well. He even notes to himself that it wasn't the same since Thomas left to run his own branch line. Edward is glad to shunt the coaches and be station pilot for a day, but the next morning, he gets hissed by Gordon and told the fat controller that the big engines have been hissing him, saying that he broke the strike. But Sir Topham Hatt reassures Edward that he did a nice job with the shunting. He then decides that the railway needs a new tank engine to work and heads over to a workshop. There, the fat controller looks at several engines covered in tarpaulin, where one is uncovered, revealing a green saddle tank engine with red stripes. The fat controller chooses him and names him Percy, who is eager to work. Percy and Edward get along very well, shunting trucks about, and the former even wished at Henry, who became startled when he tried to insult the latter. Thomas comes back the next day, and the fat controller announces that he shut the big engines up in the shed for starting a strike. Thomas, Percy and Edward are then taken the task of running the railway. Thomas and Edward are put in charge of a main line, while Percy is put in charge of a Farquhar branch line, pulling Annie and Clarabelle. The three engines do their best to keep up the good work on the railway, just as the other three are stuck in the shed unless if they learn their lesson. And with that, Gordon, James and Henry feel silly for their little mutiny they made. So, that episode was something. It was followed up by the big three tender engines going on strike at the end of the last episode and that they've been punished in this episode. 
It also was the first ever episode to introduce Percy, who would be one of the most iconic characters in the franchise for decades, and since then he was stuck as Thomas's best friend, more so than ever. And he certainly showed Henry not to mess with him or his friends by leashing him. That scoundrel he is too. As this episode stands, it's quite a good introductory episode for one of the very main characters who would be popular for years to come. The last episode on the tape is Percy Nredegi Furv, the Welsh version of Percy Runs Away. It had been days when the three big engines had been shut up in the shed for going on strike and the fat controller came over to see them. He told Gordon, James and Henry that he hopes that they have learned their lesson. He then informs the three that Thomas, Percy and Edward have been running the mainline well by themselves and is willing to let them out once they work hard and not complain about shunting. The three agree and go on to continue with their duties. Percy, Edward and Thomas were also told by the Fat Controller to work on the branch line as a reward for their hard work. Thomas collects Annie and Clarabelle, while Edward and Percy play around with the trucks. Percy even teases the bigger engines when they pass by. Later, Percy has just finished doing some shunting and is about to go back to the yards. He forgot that Edward told him to whistle to let the signalman know he is there and suddenly, by pure shock, he is on the same line Gordon is pulling the express. Percy can do nothing but shut his eyes and Gordon comes to a screeching halt, angry that the green engine is in his way. Without hesitation, Percy begins to move backwards and runs away as fast as he could. He passes through Edward Station and straight up Gordon's Hill from top to bottom. Percy couldn't let himself stop as his crew jumped out of his cab earlier. At the next station, Percy was thankfully stopped as he was diverted into a big bank of soil. The green saddle tank engine was relieved he stopped and is worried out after running for so long. Gordon then comes to get Percy out of the soil and congratulates him for preventing a potential accident, to which Percy apologises. Percy then has given his role as the station pilot and he still has his cheeky attitude towards the big engines. This episode was a roller coaster ride, as it's got Percy reversing and speeding through the line with the ever so iconic runaway theme playing. It's also the first episode to be focused on Percy, seeing how that he appeared in six episodes this season. If there's one episode of Thomas that highlights runaway trains, then give this one a chance. And those are the episodes included on the tape, and for some reason, the credits play out weirdly. It shows a shot of the intro, which was taken from Thomas and Bertie, before it then shows a shot of Thomas seen in the episode Cole, just when the credits roll. Right after the credits, the theme song stop and it just holds on the image of Thomas for about 10 seconds or so. Creepy. And there you go, that's all this VHS had to offer. Nine episodes from the first season featuring narration from John Ogwen. While this tape might be one of my favourites of the Thomas ones, it's a good thing that I experienced some of the earlier episodes that aired in the 80s. It had the same theme song, characters, familiar sounding music and even a bit of the settings. The episodes on this tape also showed me how railway terminology with the engines worked, with things such as signals, turntables, guards, tanks and steam engines, and what rolling stock the trains pull. And as this is from the first season, this tape has the first six engines appearing, as Toby didn't appear in the next few episodes, which I did experience in this VHS. So, it wasn't that disappointing for me not seeing characters like Duck, Harold, Diesel or Bill and Ben show up, as they were introduced in the next season. So, in all fairness, I'd say that this is my second favourite Thomas VHS, as this one could be my top favourite. But enough about that, the next one is a surprise. 
It's going to be about a woman who owns and runs a cafe, and that woman is a very popular character who first appeared in the books by a Welsh author back in the 60s. It'll be about her opening her own cafe, and her first customer is quite the ditzy one. It really is that obvious, isn't it? And it's the second most popular Welsh children's character other than Tequin. See you next time! We'll be right back.